gosh, it's so wonderful to see everybody here. What a blessing it is to see your faces today. I want everybody to stand up, stand up. Everybody stand up. I want you, everybody move around. I saw you guys, you guys were jumping. I want you to move around, stretch out. Everybody stretch out, stretch out. All right? So you know, we're going to start off, let's start off just a little differently. We're going to start off with a game. And you guys know this game. And it is, the game is, you know, the opposite. So when it tells you to go up, you're going to do what? Go and when it tells you to go down, you're going to do what? Go so I guess maybe when you go up, I don't know, maybe do a little extra. Maybe, maybe do a little jump. Huh? What do you think? Does that sound like you can do it this morning? You guys sound like you're ready to go. Are we ready to go? All right, let's go. Let's start. It's time to play reverse. Stand up, sit down. If the arrow points up, you have to sit down. Right, if the ready, arrow points ready. down, you have to stand ready. up. If you go the same direction as the arrow, you are out. I Better watch help. closely because things can help. get tricky fast. Let's try a practice round. Here we go. Now it's time okay. for round one. Okay, no, no, let's see what happens. Yeah. Oh, up. 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 Yeah. Up. Did you make it through round one? If so, you let's move good, on to round good. two. All right, here we go. A little faster. Through round two, no. let's go again. Yeah, a little go, faster go, 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 this little time. Faster. Let's go again. 
again. Let's go even faster this round. Faster. Can we go faster? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, guys. Oh, a bunch of you quit. A bunch of you guys quit. <laughs> Thanks for playing reverse. All right, Stand good up, job, guys. Good job. Okay, guys, I want everybody to stand up. We're going to just start with a, some nice praise and worship. It's always good, good to praise our Lord. And I want to start you off with um, just a verse. And, uh, you know, in these times that have been going on, it's just something that's just always been kind of on my heart. And it's with seven, Second Chronicles, and it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. And another way of saying heal is to restore. So uh, let's just praise God and, and ask for restoration, and let's just pray that his spirit meet us here today. All right, praise you, God. Good morning, friends. We have, I'm going to ask Dami. Dami, where are you? There you go. Dami is going to lead us in a prayer. as we start church and keep us safe in Jesus name amen 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 thank you Dami okay friends so we welcome you we welcome those who are watching on Facebook and we welcome those who are here in the house and just some housekeeping for those that are watching on Facebook due to copyright issues we're gonna be muted for a little bit as we sing so you will not, there's nothing wrong with your sound. You will not hear sound for a little bit. But stay tuned because God has an awesome word for us. He has a powerful word for us. So you want to hear that and the sounds will come on after we finish worship. All right, guys, I am going to read Exodus 15, 11. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders our god does wonders amen he is glorious amen so father we come before you today lord and we say you are mighty god you are holy and we lift you up god we exalt you we exalt you god and we sing that you are glorious that there is no one like you father so receive our praises we say come be enthroned come take your place in your in this house god come take your place in our hearts in every mind today we invite you thank you lord you are glorious
mighty God, and there is none, none like you, Lord. There is no one like you, God. You deserve all our praise. Right, guys? He deserves all of our praise. So let's give it all to him. Father, we just come to you, God. And we give you honor, God. We give you glory, Lord, because you deserve it all, God. You are worthy. You are worthy. Let's lift our hands, friends, and let's tell them, you are worthy, God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we welcome you. We welcome you to do what you want to do in this place, Lord. You are worthy, God. You are worthy.
For without you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Let's tell them again, guys. You are worthy of it all. You deserve all praise. You deserve all honor, God. You deserve all glory, my King. You are worthy, King Jesus. You are worthy, King Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. He deserves all the glory. Amen. All the glory. Father God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. As we transition our, our, our time now for our tithes and his offerings, amen. Or, so we ask ushers to pass up and uh, we ask to prepare your hearts to give uh, unto the Lord today. Praise God. He deserves all the glory. Amen. All the glory. Amen. Um, as our special speaker today, Pastor Marsha, she's going to mention she is a missionary. But she's a missionary to the churches. And, uh, and she needs people to help her, right? So this offering that we are collecting uh, does go to missionaries. We help people throughout. No, we're not doing BGMC. I know, but it's offering. Amen. But this offering, amen, the, the offering that we put it does go to, uh, to missionaries to help people that are in need, all right? She's one of them. We have pa different people actually from this church that are going across the nations. Uh, so we, when you give, God takes care of the rest. Amen? He takes care of the rest. Uh, so uh, you guys also know that we're going to be receiving, Pastor had mentioned yesterday, that on Monday we're going to receive over a thousand boxes of food, all right? And... Uh, and one of my favorite verses is that it's Matthew 6.33. If you take care of God's kingdom, his righteousness, he would take care of your business. Amen. So all we have to do is look forward and work towards what he tells us to do. And he tells us to do what he, tells, what he asks us to do. He mandates to do. He commissions us to do is to speak to the people and to make disciples. All right. To make disciples. And in, in doing that, he takes care of our business. Amen. How many of us have needs? Nobody? All right? No. I see some hands. God takes care of our needs. So these are ways that we could give. Amen. We could uh, go online. Uh, text 77977. And you put the, the uh, ICC Central, or which, depending on which campus you go to. Uh, you text it and follow the prompts, and you're going to uh, put the offering that way. We could also do it uh, through iccnyc.org, the website. And we could also just bring it in here like we're going to give into the baskets. So no matter which way you do it, God tells us to be a cheerful giver. Right, Caleb? Cheerful giver. I know you've got the mask on, but let me see your cheerful face. Yep, I saw it. All right. Amen. Cheerful giver. So let's hold that offering like it's a song, like it's a, a million dollars, whatever it is. Hold it tight because it's going to go right straight to God. You guys ready? All right, let's pray. So Father God, we thank you. Bless this offering. Bless the giver. Bless any amount. Father God, we give it unto you with a good heart, Father, because you are our provider. We love you. We honor you. And in Jesus' name. We give it all to you. Amen. So we have a special speaker, a special guest with us today. And she's going to be with us all this weekend. She was with us last night. And friends, she 
one day sat here just like you. She was a child in this church. She sat in, in Sunday school. She went to kids church. She, as she grew older, the Lord sent her. Well, she'll share with you, but I think it was at, at an early age, just not much, not much older than you. God called her, spoke to her, filled her with his presence, and has sent her. And here she is back with us to share what God is doing and what he has to say to us. So I want you to welcome Pastor Marsha Mansour. everybody. How y'all doing this morning? Yeah, feeling all right? No? You feeling good? So this is an interactive time, so you guys can talk back to me. So, but I want to take a couple of minutes for you guys to get to know who I am. Um, so I'm going to give you a quiz question. If you look at me, where do you think I was born? What do you think? Chicago? No. How about you? I was born in Africa. But pick a part in Africa. Huh? Pick a part in Africa. What you, not Morocco. What do you think? Huh? Say again. No, baby. Where else? Nope. Huh? Nope, not Ethiopia. I'll give you one more chance. One more, one more hand. What do you think? No, not Sierra Leone. It's amazing that you know Sierra Leone, so. <laughs> I was born in Egypt. Did you, I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. Grace, brother, Grace, I didn't hear you. <laughs> I was born in Egypt. Actually, my whole family's from Egypt. But most of the time, people think I'm Puerto Rican. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. They actually speak to me in Spanish, and when I can't answer, they're like, why didn't your parents teach you Spanish? And I'm like, because my parents don't know Spanish. Nobody knows Spanish. We don't know Spanish. But I was born in Egypt, and I speak Arabic. And when I came to this country, I was three years old. And we moved to a part in Brooklyn that we were living in. It was Avenue I. And then we moved to McDonald's Avenue in Brooklyn. And one day we were on the bus, me and my mom. And I have never been shy a day in my life. It is not a characteristic that I possess. So I was talking to everybody on the bus, going up and down the row of the bus, talking to everybody. And this woman turned to my mother I said, you know, all that energy that she has, you need to take her to my church. And my mother said, well, where is your church? She said, it's on 64th Street in Brooklyn. It's called the International Christian Center. You should go there. And so I went. At four years old, I went to this church, and I loved it. I loved it. And one day, the man that was in charge, his name was Eddie Rivera. Eddie Rivera was in charge of Sunday school, and he said, does anybody want to give their life to Jesus? And I put my hands up. And he said, if you want to serve Jesus and be with Jesus, come up. And I ran up to the altar, and I gave my life to Jesus for the first time. And it changed my life. And I was only four years old. In that same church, at nine years old, there was a man that was preaching, and he was talking about how God wants to use people for his glory. How God wants to use them to teach other people about Jesus. And everything inside of me felt like it was on fire. My stomach and my heart, and I was like, that's me. He's talking about me. I have to do that. And he said, so if you feel like God is talking to you like that, I want you to raise your hand. So I raised my hand. And that was the first time in my life that I knew I was going to be used for God. I didn't know how. 
I just knew God put his hands on me. There was a call on my life. Well, then this church moved here to Staten Island. And you know where my parents bought a house? Right across the street. But you know what? We didn't know when we bought that house. We just knew this church moved, and we were so sad. We had no idea where it was. We just knew it moved. And my parents bought that church, the house across the street. Said, let's go check out the church that's across the street. And it was our church. It was our church. And at 12 years old, I went to the youth group downstairs. And they were praying for children to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And at 12, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit here. And then at 12 years old again, we had a healing service on this platform. And I sat right in that row. And I saw a man's, a man's leg grow in front of my eyes. He came in, he had special shoes on because his legs weren't even. So he had a lot of back pain. So he had a special shoe so that his legs would match. And the pastor took his shoes off and you could see that one foot was here and one foot was here. It was very, very different. And we began to pray and I sat there with my eyes wide open watching what was going on. And then finally I couldn't sit there and I came and I stood here because I had to see what was happening. And we began to pray, and the whole church began to pray. And right in front of my eyes, his leg grew. And he was completely healed. And so at 14, I started teaching Sunday school in this church. And I was so excited. I had the kindergarten class. And you would have thought I had 50 children. I made red jello for the Red Sea. And I buried all the Egyptians in the Red Sea. And I, sung in the, and I sung in the choir, even though I couldn't sing. And I ushered, and I did whatever I wanted to because I was so in love with Jesus, I just wanted to be in this building all the time. When it opened, I was the first one here. When it closed, I was the last one to leave. I helped all the custodians that worked here to move stuff because I didn't want to go home. I just wanted to be here because I love Jesus so much. Well, at 19, Jesus sent me to Bible school in, Mass in this foreign country called Massachusetts, <laughs> where they wrecked my name. That's it. There's no R in my name in Massachusetts. But I went to Bible school there, and I started pastoring right away in Plymouth Rock Assembly of God in Massachusetts. And I worked there, and I worked in a deaf church, and then I worked in a, in a real country church. And one of the funniest moments in this country church that I went through, I am from Brooklyn. And they sent me to a country church, boys and girls. A, con a, a country church. So we go to dinner at the pastor's house when I get there. Now, my mom raised me right. So I offered to help with dinner. And she said, great, sweetheart, get the, get the green beans. So I opened the refrigerator. She said, what are you doing? I said, you told me to get the green beans. She goes, not there. So I closed the refrigerator and I opened the freezer. Because where else would green beans be? The refrigerator, she goes, what are you doing? I was like, I'm getting the green beans. She goes, not there. Outside. Outside? You want me to go pick string beans? I was not a happy camper. I went to go pick the green beans, and I'm thinking in my head, if anybody wants milk for the coffee, no way. No way. Everyone's having black coffee today. But you know what? I have had the opportunity since those days to travel all over the world for the gospel. I've been to Uganda. I've been to Rwanda. I've been to Kenya. I've been to Tanzania. I've been to Morocco. I've been to London, I've been to Calcutta, India, I've been to New Delhi, India, I've been to Mexico many, many times. And you know what I'm going to tell you? It, is that when I gave my life to Jesus here at a, at a child's age, and I said, Lord, my life is yours, he has shown me again and again and again how faithful and how good he is. And he has guided my life, boys and girls, every single day. 
from that point. As I want to start, because I want you to know who I am and my story here, because I are exactly where you are. And I stand here as a testimony to this church and as a testimony to the goodness of God and his faithfulness. And so I'm so excited to be here with you, boys and girls. I'm so excited to share God's word with you. And I'm going to ask you to do something with me. Would you stand up with me for a minute? And would everyone just lift their hands before the Lord right now? Before we go into the word? Hallelujah. 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 Boys and girls, just lift your hand nice and high with me. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, Lord God. We give you praise, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for every child, for every young person, Lord God, for every family that's here today, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that we stand in the midst of your legacy, Lord God. The word that you spoke about this church and this house, Lord God. The anointing that sits in this place, Lord God. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you have your hand upon every child in this place, every young person. I thank you, Lord God, that the anointing of God is in this room right now, Lord God. And Lord, I pray, God, that you touch every child in this place, every young person, God, that every person would walk out of this place feeling your presence and changed by your power, Lord God. Hallelujah. And Lord, we just stand for one moment and give you praise. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, God, that we can gather and learn about you this morning. And Holy Spirit, we invite you to come have your way here. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories through my lesson. Because it's really important for you to understand that the Bible, right, that we're going to use, isn't just what happened. It's what's happening. Right? So what do I mean by that? If God heals here, he heals today. If God touches lives here, he touches lives today. This is not a history book. It gives us history, but it's not something that doesn't happen right now. Does that make sense, boys and girls? It happens right now. Like, it talks about healing in this book. Right? It talks about God healing and I'm going to tell you a story that happened to me in Africa on my first trip. On my first trip to Africa, we went to a place in Tanzania that was called Babati. And Babati is 99% Muslim. They don't like Jesus there. They don't like Jesus. They don't want you to preach about Jesus. They don't want you to talk about Jesus. Well, when we were in Babati, we were preaching and sharing. And we were talking about a God that heals. And so as we were teaching about that, this man comes up with a little, little girl in his hands, and she's about four or five years old, and she can't walk. And he puts her on the platform where we're preaching. And he says, you talk about a God that can heal? Heal her. And we have an audience of about 600 people watching. So me and the missionary look at each other, and we smile, and we're like, Let's do it. Let's pray. Because God is faithful, and if he heals here, he still hears now. So we began to pray for this little girl. Boys and girls, before we finished praying for her, she jumped up. Completely healed. Completely healed. She started running around the arena. And now, what happened? Now what happened is that now we have... <coughs> hundreds of people that need healing that we're praying for well in the midst of all that someone comes to me and says pastor we want you to come with us somewhere to pray for somebody who's in a hospital she can't come well i really shouldn't leave the group because it's late it's dark 
and it's, there's a lot of criminal things that happen. But I felt God speak to me to say, go. So I turned to the missionary, I said, I'd like to go. And he said, you feel God? I said, yes. He said, take a translator and be careful, go. So we walk down this dark alley, very dark. We walk through another alley, and we end up in what really looks like just a room, but it's their clinic. It has a shower curtain to separate the rooms. It's not clean. It's, it's really nothing that we would understand as Americans in, as a clinic. But there's a mama sitting there, and she's holding a baby. And many of you know, you would know, what is the one thing our body needs more than air? Air and then water. So this baby is completely dehydrated. She's so dehydrated that she looks completely wrinkled. She looks like a prune. Her skin is all sunken and, and, and wrinkled. Her eyes are rolling in the back of her head. She can't keep her head up. And mama's holding her. And I said, mama, you sent for me? She said, yes, pray for my, pray for my daughter. I said, is, what, what's going on? She said, she's dehydrated. The doctor walks in. He said, I've tried to give her fluids. All of them collapsed. She goes, the last step that we do is we try to give fluids in the head, and that all collapsed. I said, so what happens now? The doctor says, the baby died. And he walks out. Because that's, that's the life and death in some countries. There's no specialist. There's other places to go. This is it. And I said, so why did you call me, mommy? Because I wanted to hear her faith. And she said, because I believe God can heal my baby. And I said, oh, what's her name? I said, her name is Beatrice. And Beatrice was yellow. So, so sick right in front of my eyes. And I leaned over with the missionary that was with me. We began to pray. Boys and girls, before I finished my first sentence in prayer, I watched her skin begin to unwrinkle right in front of my eyes. I kept praying, and she kept getting better. In the middle of the prayer, she sat up, her eyes focused, she sat fully up in her mom's arms. Her color came back. And by the time I said amen, she was holding my hands and laughing. She was completely healed. I turned to her. I said, what's your name, honey, in Swahili? She said, Beatrice. Completely set free. Mama couldn't stop crying. And we walked away from that place saying, we serve a God that heals. And why do I tell you this? Because I want you to understand that as I begin to tell you stories out of Scripture, that we have stories too. That God is a God that wants to make himself real to us today in this moment. In this moment. And so here we come to the story of the disciples. And it's right after the day of Pentecost. They've been filled with the Holy Spirit. They've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. They, they speak with tongues. They have the gifts of the Spirit moving in their life. And Peter and John are on their way to what we would say they're on their way to church. It's 9 o'clock, it's time for service. So they've come to the temple to pray. It's their prayer meeting. But as they come to the temple, they find a man sitting here by the gate called Beautiful, and he's lame. What does lame mean? What does lame mean? If I say someone is lame, what does it mean? He has crippled legs, right? His legs don't work. And the Bible says that he has been lame for years, years, decades. He's been sitting there. And he has no way of making money, so he's a beggar. He begs for money all day. Can you imagine that life? Begs that people give him enough money so he can eat. Begs that people give him enough money so he can drink. Maybe buy a, a new pair of shoes, maybe. So he sits there and he begs all day. And Peter and John walk up on him and he reaches out his hand and he begs for money. And Peter looks at him and says, silver and gold I don't have. So what is he saying? Money I don't have. But what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Get up and walk. And then Peter doesn't give the man a chance. If you read the scripture, Peter grabs his hands and pulls him up. And the man instantly, instantly as he pulls him up, the Bible says his legs become strong and he can stand. He's completely healed. Now he begins to run through the temple. Look what happened to me. Look what ha 
can you imagine if you have been lame for 30 years, 40 years, and all of a sudden you can walk? You know how much you would run? Well, here he is. He's running all around, all around rejoicing in what God just did. Well, if you guys remember the story really carefully, people weren't happy with all of that. Because there were some men who had killed Jesus and put him on the cross. And they thought that their problem died when they crucified Jesus. They didn't understand that they made a whole bunch of new problems. Now there was a whole set of disciples that had the same anointing and the same power. And one of those disciples preached his first message being Peter, and 3,000 people gave their lives to Jesus. So they went from one problem to almost 4,000 problems in a matter of a couple of days. So now this man is running around saying, Jesus has healed me. And they said, no, we crucified Jesus. He said, no, no. They healed him in his name. So now the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and all these other people who are not happy with the disciples arrest them because they have to keep them quiet. They don't want them to talk about Jesus. So they put them in jail, and they begin to threaten them. And they begin to tell them, you cannot preach in the name of Jesus anymore. And Peter says, no way. No way. There is no other name I can preach in. It's only in the name of Jesus. That is the only name. And so the Pharisees get scared. They said, these guys are going to cause a riot. They're going to flip the whole nation. Everybody's going to know Jesus. So they threaten them. And they tell them to be quiet or they'll kill them. And then they let them go in hopes that if they threaten them enough, they'll just be quiet. So Peter and John go home, they find the other disciples, and they tell them what happened. What do you think was their reaction of the other disciples? What do you think? What do you think, buddy? Huh? Right, what happened to you? What do you think, what do you think they would want them to, do you think they'd want them to stop preaching? What do you think, honey? What were you going to say? Say again? Surprise? Do you think they got scared? They just got threatened. Do you think they got scared? Maybe a little bit. Sure. They're human. Of course, someone just threatened them. They might have gotten scared a little bit. But you know what? They gathered together, and they, do, they did what they're supposed to do. What is that? What do you think when they gathered together and they met with a problem that is bigger than them, what did they do? They prayed. They prayed. Say that again like that. They There's some authority in that. Say that again. They prayed. They prayed. So they gathered the disciples together, and they gathered Peter and John together, and they prayed. Let me read to you their prayer, okay? It says, I'm going to take you from a part in the middle. He says, for truly against your servant Jesus, whom you've anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do what's in your hands and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look at their threats. And grant to your servants that with all boldness we might speak your word. Stretch out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy son, Jesus. And when they had finished praying, where they were established together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God boldly. So they gathered together and they prayed. What do they pray for? Someone else. What do they pray for? Yeah, honey. They don't, they don't. They don't pray for protection. They don't pray that the threats go away. 
They don't pray that everyone leaves them alone. They don't pray that. They pray for something else. What do they pray for? They pray for boldness to keep preaching the gospel. But they just got threatened. Shouldn't they stop? It's affirmative over there. Shouldn't they? Shouldn't they say, well, you know what? Let's just take it a little easy. Nobody wants to get hurt here. Maybe they'll arrest us again. Maybe they'll hurt our families. No. No. They pray for boldness to keep preaching. And we know that God agrees with them. You know why? Because when they were praying, when they finished praying, everything in the room began to shake in the power of God. So that's God saying, yes, that's the right prayer. That's the right prayer to pray. But why didn't they pray that it would go away? You know why? Because God was so real to them. He was so real that they couldn't stop telling people about Jesus. They couldn't stop telling people how much Jesus loved them. He could, they couldn't stop talking about the cross and how Jesus died for them. They couldn't. They said, Lord, just make us bold to do it more. Because we can't stop. You are too good. You are too faithful. You are God and everyone has to know it. And can I tell you something? Those 12 disciples, they changed the world. They changed the world. They revolutionized the planet preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They changed the world. And I have seen God, I have seen God do such great and mighty things when his people decide that they cannot do anything but tell people about Jesus. I've watched God show up for people in such a way because they made a decision that God has been too good to me. I love him too much. I have to tell others about him. And so the disciples in this prayer come away with three things. They say, we need courage. They don't know what courage is. Courage is one of those big words. What does courage mean? Come on. Some of my teenagers in the room, what does courage mean? You can. Perfect. That's a perfect answer. Your ability to be brave. Your ability to be brave. So they ask for the ability to be brave. They ask for the boldness to speak. And then they ask for the power of the Holy Spirit. When I was in Uganda, Uganda is a beautiful country, but Uganda and, and Uganda, hi, <laughs> Habari. <laughs> Uganda is a beautiful country, and we were in this part of, uh, part of Uganda where there was an orphanage that had about, about 10,000 orphans in one orphanage. It was incredible. And in Africa, and my sister over there can help us, in Africa, you know the students grade by their uniform. So the burgundy is the elementary kids and so on every, you know, which way. What you don't see a lot of in the in orphanage that I was in is the color green, because green is high school. And unfortunately, in that part, there wasn't a lot of kids that were going to certainly very little girls. Very little girls. So we were walking through the orphanage, ministering to the kids, and then it was lunchtime, and so we were trying to stay alive so we didn't get knocked down from all the kids trying to run to get their food. But my eye caught this one girl wearing green. It struck me. So I grabbed her, I said, hey, you're in high school. And she beamed up and she goes, I'm a senior. So special. I said, oh my goodness, you're a senior? She goes, I am. I said, what's your name? She goes, it's Patricia. I said, well, hello, Patricia. How are you? She said, good. I said, so you're graduating? She said, I am. I said, so what are you going to do now? And she said, oh, I can't tell you. I said, 
said, why can't you tell me? She said, because I prayed to God and he told me something, but I don't think it's right. She goes, so I asked him to make it sure, like to make it really clear to me that it was right. So I'm waiting for that. I said, why don't you tell me what he said? She said, no, because I don't think it's right. And I said, well, it has to be right if God said it. It kind of works that way. And she said, I'll say it to you quietly, but don't tell anybody. I said, okay. Now, she has no idea who I am. She has no idea who the team is. She said, God told me that I'm going to be a pastor. But it's not possible because there are no female pastors. She's talking to me. She's talking to me. I said, really? I said, do you know who I am? She said, no. I said, I'm a pastor. And I whispered back to her. She goes, oh, and you're a female. I said, yes, I am. <laughs> I said, you prayed that God would send you a sign? She said, yes. I said, I'm standing right here. I said, God sent me all the way from America to give you your sign. I said, you know how special you are, little girl? I pulled out from my team two other female pastors. We surrounded Patricia, and we said, we are all female pastors. And if God spoke to you, that this is what he's put on your life, he's confirming it, and he's showing you. I said, can we pray for you? She kneeled on the ground. One of my most favorite pictures is us three kneeling over her and praying for her and for the call on her life. That girl has now graduated Bible school and is now pastoring in her hometown, running a, a children's ministry there of some hundreds of children because God put his hand on her life. Why do I tell you that? Because God, when he speaks, like he does here, and we're courageous enough to step out, God confirms his word. And he confirms it when we're bold, and he confirms it by the power of the Spirit. How did God move me through an orphanage that has all these children to find one girl that I was supposed to see, that I was supposed to speak to? That's the God we serve. That's how big our God is. And so here the disciples are praying, God, give us, give us courage. So that's bravery in our hearts. Give us boldness in our mouth, and give us the power of your Spirit. You know why they're asking for the power of his spirit? Because boys and girls, when you see a miracle, it is very hard to say God doesn't exist. How can you say it? When I saw that leg grow, I knew that nobody could cause that but God. Nobody could do that but God. And I knew it. When I've seen other things happen that I know is simply God, there's no other way around it. You know what happens when we do that? The people that don't know Jesus now are introduced to Jesus, and they're introduced to his power. On one of my trips to Mexico, you guys do vacation Bible school here, right? You didn't do it this year, I know, but normally we do. Well, I do a vacation Bible school in my former church also, and we have a great time. But one of my favorite things to do is to do vacation Bible schools in other countries because they don't get the opportunities we get. So there's a place in Mexico called the Coli where we do a vacation Bible school there, and it is the poorest children in the city. But the children, when they know we're coming, they put on their best clothes because they're so excited. But their best clothes, boys and girls, have holes in them, and they're ripped. And some of the children, there's one particular boy who I love, his name is Luis. Luis has half his ear that's been chewed by bed bugs because his house is just not clean. A lot of the children come and they haven't eaten all day. We learned early on when we went there that some of the moms, because they don't have enough food, they feed their, their girl children one day and don't feed the boys, and then the next day they feed the boys and they don't feed the girl. So whenever we gave the kids snack, we saw them saving stuff. And I said, why, why are you saving it? so I can give to my brother because it's not his turn to eat today. See, that's kind of what it looks like out there. And so that's why we, when we look at our lives, we have to be grateful. But we also have to be generous. We have to be both. We have to be grateful that God 
has blessed us. And for everything that we have, our homes, our lives, our families, everything, we have to be grateful. But we also have to be generous because we're not better than them. Amen? So we go and we get ready for this vacation Bible school. And the missionary says to me, it was one of the first times we ever did it there. She goes, I get about 200 kids here. And I said, okay, so let's plan for 250. And I had planned to buy a nice snack for every kid because I wasn't sure if they had eaten breakfast or lunch and I didn't know when they were going to eat again. So we planned it that way. So we got 250 because by faith I said we're going to have an extra 50 kids. And we do a full vacation Bible school all morning. Wreck, crafts, game. I mean, we are exhausted. But the place that we do it in, boys and girls, the team actually has to go an hour early to clean it because it's really just a, a dilapidated park. It's full of bugs, bugs this big. We let the boys do that part of the job. We were like, that's why we brought men. Get to killing the bugs, let's go. And some of the rowdier boys that are in the neighborhood think it's really funny to throw the bugs at us. Think it's funny. So I've learned if I just put them on me, they just leave me alone. Even if I'm terrified, it just gets them to leave me alone. But we clean it up, it's full of all kinds of dirt and junk. But we get it nice and pretty for them, and we let them come out, and we have vacation Bible school. And so we do it for four days. So the first day, we hit 250 right away. We give out all our snacks, and I'm like, okay. So tomorrow we have to prepare for 270. So we prepare for 270, we finish it right away. The third day, we prepare for 300, we finish 300. The missionary turns to me, hey, listen, we've never had more than 300. We don't have to worry. I mean, it's, it's, it's not possible that we're going to have more than 300. I said, okay. I said, let's just have 350 just to be safe. The fourth day comes, we have a woman that's working with us who's not a Christian. She's a Buddhist. But she's come because she likes what we're doing and she wants to be involved. So she's been counting snack every day. The fourth day she comes to me, she goes, Pastor, you're in trouble. I said, why am I in trouble? She said, you have 350 snacks. I said, okay. She goes, you have over 400 children. I said, are you sure? She goes, I've counted seven times already. So of course I have to count again because I can't believe what she's saying. And I start counting, and I stopped counting at 400. I said, we're in trouble. I don't have a solution. I can't open them up. I can't dummy them down. There's no place to go shopping. So I stand there, and I have a decision to make. So I grab hold of this verse. And I said, God, give me courage. Like, let's, let's figure out how we're going to do this. Move by your spirit. I grabbed the team. I said, guys, this is our situation. Let's go lay hands on the snacks. And the team smiles. They go, okay. So we all walk over, all 15 of us, 17 of us, I think, and begin to lay hands on the snacks. The woman is not saved. She doesn't know Jesus. Gee, so she comes over, and she pulls on me. She goes, what are you doing? I said, we're praying over the snacks. And she said, you're praying? Why? I said, well, there's this story in Scripture. What story do you think I'm going to tell her? Let me hear it. What? The fishes and the loaves. So I begin to tell her that story, and she goes, wait, 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 stop. Do you really think, she's so mad, do you really think that God is going to multiply your snack? And I said, I do. She said, oh, you're just ridiculous. And she walks away. She's not happy with me. And she goes to report me to the missionary. She storms over to the missionary. She goes, your friend over here is praying over the snack. She goes, why? Well, we don't. And she begins to tell the story. And the missionary says, that's a great idea. And she runs over and prays with us. We finish praying. And we have all the children sit down for snack time. And I turned to G. I said, G, do you want to help us give out snack? Fine. So we give her a box. The box is a triangle box like this. A rectangular box like this. Has snacks and juice. And we begin to give it out. We hit 320, 330, 340, 350. How many did I have? 350. I had 350. 350, 360, 370, 380, 390, 400, 410, 420, and one box left over. One box left over. And do you know who's holding that box? What do you think? That's right. 
That's right. My Buddhist friend G was holding the box. Full. And she stood there shaking. Tears in her eyes. And she said, what just happened? And I said, well, why don't you tell me what happened? And she said, God did this? And I said, absolutely he did. She goes, how do you know? I said, well, because he left his signature. She goes, what's that? I said, see, God never gives us just enough. He always gives us exceedingly abundantly more than we could hope or imagine. He didn't just give us just what we needed. He gave us more than what we needed. She goes, you don't understand, Pastor. The kids kept putting their hands in here, but it never went down. I saw it with my own eyes. I said, that's God, G. And she stood there, and then she dropped everything and ran to the missionary because she needed, she needed to understand what just happened. And you see, that's what happens, boys and girls, when we decide that we must tell people about Jesus, when we decide that we must be brave for him, when we decide that we must be courageous and we say, God, we need you to show up. We're here, God, and we want to be brave and courageous for you. And we need the power of your spirit. God shows up. And he produces for us snacks for some of the poorest children because it matters to him. And he heals a little girl in Africa because it matters to him. And he meets a young teenage girl that's called to the missionary in Africa. Why? Because it matters to him. And he needs us to be like the disciple that's saying, I'm going to be courageous. I'm going to be bold. And I'm going to trust the power of your spirit. And I'm going to move forward. And you might say, well, I'm too young for that. No, you're not. No, you're not. Age has nothing to do with it. You guys, listen. You guys don't get a junior Holy Spirit. You guys don't get, you get a full-blown Holy Spirit. You don't get a junior Holy Spirit. I have seen children at five years old baptized in the Holy Spirit. You don't get a little Holy Spirit. You get him completely. And let me tell you something. If I ever felt sick when I worked in my church, I never wanted an adult to pray for me. I found a child. You know why? Because children have incredible faith. They pray for you. They say, Lord, touch and make it better. Amen. You better? They expect you to be better in that moment. You better say yes. But that's how they believe God. That's why God tells us to have their hearts. And so children, I want to tell you today that the world outside is getting so dark. They don't know Jesus. And you know what's happened? It's become more evil. But like the disciples, we don't have to be afraid. You know why? We have God. We have God. And the power of God in us, the Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. What does that mean? That little bit of Jesus that's inside of me is greater and bigger than all the evil out there. So all I have to do is stand for him. All I have to do is to speak for him. And I will tell you something. Maybe it means that you don't have a hundred friends. Because maybe people don't want to know Jesus the way you do. Can I tell you? It's really okay. Jesus will give you people in your life that want to know Jesus the way you do. But your job is to tell people about Jesus, not to be afraid, to be brave, to be bold, and to ask God, to ask God for the power of his spirit so that you can be his light. Can I tell you, as things get darker around us, and if someone can help me, I just want to darken the room a little bit. As things get darker around us, and they keep getting darker, give them a chance to help with the illustration. How many know that things are getting darker? How many can see it? Right? It's getting darker and darker and darker. But this is the power of God, is that things that get darker around us, things that get 
more subdued around us and we see more evil, the power of God gets stronger. You know why? The Bible says that the enemy, he comes in like a flood, but God raises up a standard. What does that mean? That when the enemy comes at us full force or the enemy tries to do what he's doing, God raises his hand higher. Higher. So even though it looks like this and it looks dark, if we learn to walk in the word of God, if we learn to be bold and courageous and be filled with the spirit of God, just like the word of God, we end up being like this in the darkness. We end up being the light. We end up being what shines in the darkness. It can be so dark, but if we have the Lord, this is what we look like. We look like the light in the midst of the darkness. And can I tell you, people need to see your light. People need to see your light. When they see your light, you know what they want? They want it too. I want us to pray for a minute. Could you stand up with me, everybody? Hallelujah. I want to ask you a question with your eyes closed. Hallelujah. And I just want to ask you a simple question. If you have never given your life to Jesus like I did when I was four, if you have never said, Jesus, I want you to come into my life and I want you to be my best friend, I know that you died for me. And I want to live for you. I want you to lift your hand this morning and say, I want to pray that prayer. I want to give my life to Jesus. There you go. That's it. Lift it nice and high this morning. Beautiful. Keep them up. Don't bring them down. Keep them up. Amen. I want those people who have their hands lifted to pray with me right now, okay? I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died for me, that you gave your life for me. I'm sorry, Lord, for my life without you. I'm sorry for the bad things that I do. I ask you today to come into my life and to be my best friend. Come be my Lord. I give you my life today. I want to be your child. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have seven people that prayed that prayer today. Can we applaud them? That was the best decision of your life. I want to pray right now, of course. If you can lift your hands with me, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you, Lord God. We bless you, God. Great and mighty is your name, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you, God, for the story that's in, in the book of Acts, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the boldness of the disciples, Lord. And Father, like we said, Father, this is not simply a book to give us facts or history. It's a book for us to live by. And so, Lord, tonight, today, God, we ask, God, that you would give us the courage and the boldness of the disciples, Lord God. Lord, that we won't be afraid, Lord God, of people that don't know you. We won't be afraid, Lord God, of things going wrong. We won't be afraid of anything, God. That we will be fearless for you, Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you'd fill every person in this room with great courage, Lord God. Great courage, Lord God. The ability to be brave, Lord God. To know that we have the truth and that we stand for the truth. Father, I pray, God, that you fill every person in this room with boldness in their mouth today, Lord God. That, Lord, they're not, they're not here, Lord God, and, and, and they don't have the, to have to figure out everything that they say. You're going to give them the words, Lord God. So give them boldness, Lord God, to speak your word, to speak your light in the darkness, God. The same way you opened up this word that was full of light, may our words be like that, Lord God. Light in the darkness, Jesus. 
And Father, I pray, Lord God, for the infilling of your spirit in this room right now. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are welcome. Touch every person this morning. Fill them with your spirit from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living Spirit. Each person, just take a moment right now. Every boy and girl, just invite the Holy Spirit. You don't need to be afraid of him. He's part of the Trinity of God. He's a he. And we just ask each person right now to just invite him to touch you and to fill you this morning. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me today. Spirit, fill them this morning. Fill them this morning, Holy Spirit. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Hallelujah. Fill them this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, fill, fill. Fill every fiber. Fill every fiber from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Fill them today. Let them sense you moving in them today. Wash them today. Cleanse them today. Anoint them today. Lord, speak to them about their calling this morning. In this room, Lord, are pastors. In this room this morning are missionaries. In this room are businessmen that are going to be used for you, God. In this room are attorneys and doctors that are going to be used for you, God. In this room, Lord God, are electricians, Lord God, that are going to be used for you, God. Anoint them, we pray. Let them understand the supernatural power of your spirit this morning. That you are a God that does miracles. That if we will be courageous and brave, you will do miracles, God. If we will step out in faith, you will do miracles. You will produce snack out of the heavens, God. You will heal a girl that's dying of dehydration. You'll speak to a sweet 17-year-old girl that felt the call of God in her life. You are a God of the miraculous. You're the God of the miraculous. Touch this generation right here in this room. Make them a Daniel generation. Make them a Daniel generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fill them today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May they know you. May they know you. May they not know about you. May they know you. May your voice be sharp to their ear. May your spirit dwell in them. And may there be a voice in this generation, a voice against the darkness, a voice against the current. May they speak in the darkness and may it be like lightning, God. Anoint them, we pray. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. I'm just going to read this part out with just as your hands are lifted as well. And says, now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness we might speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your servant, Jesus. Let it be so, God. Let it be so, God. May this prayer be so over us right now, God. Grant to your servants 
that we would have boldness to speak your word, Lord God, and stretch out your hand to heal and to do signs and wonders in the name of your servant, Jesus. Do it, God, we pray. In Jesus' name. It was so good hanging out with you guys today, and I'm going to turn it back over to, it's all yours. How many of you receive that word, amen? How many of you say, that is for me, yes, Lord, fill me. His sheep hear his voice, right? And they know, they know him. And any other voice, they run from. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Marsha. We have um, we have some announcements. We have a lot of stuff going on. We have a lot of good stuff going on, friends. We have um, we've been blessed, right? Pastor was sharing last night, and he was saying because we give. This is Missions Weekend here at ICC, and because. We give to missions, and even during this time where we were closed for some months, and, you know, um, we don't have our capacity or we don't have as many people as before COVID coming in, right? But God has been faithful. His people have been faithful, and they continue to give. And so we thank God because we've never lacked, right? We've never, we've never been in need and anytime there's a need God supplies and that's because us as a body we give to missions right and, and they've we've never stopped giving to the missionaries that we support even during this time um, even if they're not able that's that's their living right so even though they can't travel they can't go to many churches maybe churches are just opening up now but we have never stopped giving and so God continues to give to us, right? And he provides and he sees our need. He sees the need of the community and we are here to be a light. So um, this Monday, we have been blessed to receive over a thousand boxes, 1,100, 1,100 boxes over, over that amount of boxes of food, perishable food. So that means that there's milk in there, there's meat in there, there's cheese in there, there's a box that will feed a family of four. So you are welcome. If you have neighbors, if you have family, let them know because it's here, right? We also, we're, we need volunteers as well. We need volunteers to come and unload the truck that is making the delivery at 8 a.m. And then at 10.30, the distribution will start. And it's going to be like a drive-by, so you just pop open your trunk, and it will be, you know, put in there. There will be time for ministry as well, but we want to let our light shine, right? And so we want to let you know. And not only that, but I think at the end of the week, there's going to be another. Okay. So, so that's one thing that's happening. Um, also, we have Monday evening... Our Children's Ministries has a parent chat. So if you have, we do that once a month. And if you haven't joined, it is, we, we take your, your prayer requests, we take your needs. Some people may have questions regarding school and things like that. And so we just encourage one another. We pray for one another. So that is a Zoom meeting that's happening Monday night. Wednesday, we have prayer here. We have started United Prayer. And that is open to everyone. And in this time, we need to pray, right? So this week we'll be praying for our city, and that is at 7 p.m. And pastor's Bible study that usually takes place at that time is still taking place uh, uh, via Facebook. And then for those that are here on Wednesday night, you can watch the Bible study. It's going to be replayed on Thursday. And October 31st, we have our, we're taking our service outside. We're taking out our light to shine on that dark day, right? Um, and so we're going to take our worship outside. We're going to praise outside. We're going to pierce darkness. Amen? So you are welcome to join us. We need candy because we know that there will be people that are walking by, that are walking outside, right? And we want to 
we want them to come. We want them to, to say, what is that? What are they talking about? What are they doing? So we, well, we want to bless them with candy, right? Because they're going to be out looking for candy. So we want to bless them. We're going to do it in a socially distanced environment. We're going to do it safe. But we need your candy to come in so that we can prepare that ahead of time. So if there's plenty of opportunities, right, to, to be the light. There's plenty of opportunities to share and to be able to bless others as we are blessed. Amen. So as I mentioned earlier that this weekend is missions weekend. And so we're focusing to look at, you know, to pray, to, to start a new year of, of missions. And as many of our missionaries continue to pray and wait for the borders and, you know, for, for the nations to open up so they can go back, um, they need to secure that the funds are there, right? And so that's where we come in. And so we, we make a faith promise and we say, and it, it's not, maybe you don't have it to give today, but you're making a promise and saying, I am committing to give X amount so that the missionaries can go out and do what they need to do. And that way they have their budget set, they have their budget established. And so you will receive, you have received a faith promise card when you came in. And so as you feel in your heart, as you feel led, this is for the adults, right? As you feel led to give, maybe if you gave last year, you want to renew that. Maybe you want to give more or maybe you want to just pledge a new amount. And I'm, it's, it's a promise. As God enables me, I will help take the message of Jesus into all the world by giving through the missions program of my local church. And so take some time, please, to write down that amount that you feel that the Lord is saying, you give this amount, whether it's a one time or you give this amount per week, per month, to help our missionaries to go out. And our children, we also have a missions program, which is who remembers our missions program? Who can tell me what that is? I hear whispers. Come on, somebody, brave, bold, louder. BGMC, Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge, right? And it's a challenge to raise funds, right? We do it through change. It doesn't have to be change, right? We want the dollars. So where our kids raise, raise money and some of them have just, you know, held fundraisers. Some of them sell things. Some of them do chores for money. There's different ways where our kids are taught to raise money to help support missionaries. And when the missionaries go out, this money provides um, Bibles, it provides curriculum, it provides the materials so that the missionaries can do what they need to do to tell the children about Jesus. So today, we're doing two things as our ushers start to collect. We are going to give in, hands in, the little tear off for your faith promise. And we are going to give an offering for BGMC. So, Father, I just thank you for, for your people here today, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness, God. And because you are faithful, God, we want to look like you, God. We want to be like you, God. And so we give you, God, not from our tithes, not from what already belongs to you, God. But we give you this above and beyond, my God, because we want to send. We want to go. We want to follow. And maybe we can't physically go. But we, we, we go through our giving, God. We go through what we share with others. And so I pray that you would bless your people today as they give. That you continue to be provider and we thank you for that. And we pray for your hands, Lord, your blessing, your favor over our missionaries, God. That you continue to open doors for them. That you would continue to bless them and keep them in Jesus' name. Remember BGMC before COVID last couple of years that me, Pastor Julius or me would have a contest. If the boys raised the most money, I would be able to do something to Pastor Julius. And if the girls raised the most money, they could do something to me. I am 0-3. Boys haven't won once. 
Remember the slime, remember the pie in the face. Uh, I I do like the COVID. I didn't have to go through that this year. The ice cream sundae when she poured the chocolate syrup all over me. And, uh, you know, I miss those good old days. So hopefully next year we can get back doing that. Uh, And just as I just want to remind you again about uh, the boxes on Monday. You know, we weren't looking for that. It's a corporation that called us and asked us as a church if we would be the hub for all of Staten Island. Uh, and we're getting 1,100 boxes on Monday, and then the following week, or sometime later that week, or the next week, and then the following week. And this could be an ongoing thing. So this is not just for feeding ICC. It's for feeding all of Staten Island so that we can be a light to this whole community, reaching the city and touching the world. And, and that's what we need. We need to pray for boldness. We need to pray for courage, and we need to pray for the Holy Spirit. Amen? You know, the Holy Spirit wants to use you. I was called into, uh, into ministry as a young boy as well. I was 11 years of age. Uh, and so God can place his hand upon you. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. Because maybe you feel God can't use me. God can use anybody. He's not looking for our abilities. He's looking for our availability. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand as we close in prayer. Again, these two sides go out those doors. These two sides go out that door. We pray God's blessing over you. Father, we come before you today, and I thank you for every child, every youth, every adult, every family that's here. And Father, I pray that you would give us boldness and courage, Lord, to live for Jesus in a dark world. I pray, Lord, whether we're in school, whether we're virtual learning, wherever we go, that, Lord, our children would know the power of your presence, the power of your peace, the power of your spirit. So I pray as we walk out, Lord, let us be like that book, Lord, that that when it opened up, the light came on. Lord, I pray that, Lord, our light doesn't just shine when we're in church, but, Lord, as we go home, as we go out to school, wherever we go, that, Lord, your light will shine through us. So just bless your people today. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, amen. God bless you. Have a great day. May the Lord watch over you.